Uh, good to be with you on this fifth day of January 2021. Uh, we'll wait for our uh, Facebook people to get on board here. Um, we're jumping on here this morning. Uh, good to be with you this morning. Uh, see if we get anybody jumping on here uh, today. Um, hope you all had a very happy new year um and are doing well uh morning joe good to be with you we got a few folks jumping on hopefully we got some folks um on our phone as well this morning um morning lou good to be with you got a few more jumping on and uh there's dale and lisa um who are with us this morning. Uh, good to be back. Morning, Deb. Saw you already. Um, let's see if we get anybody else here this morning. I uh, hope you all are enjoying the snow uh, and uh, a little, little brightness that it brings. Morning, Jean. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, already five days in, right? Uh, five days into 2021. So we're excited about that. Well, um, let me give it a 30 seconds more and um, see if we get anybody else on here today. Hope you had a good um, Christmas season and New Year's and uh, ready to get going on uh, 2021. Uh, hoping it will be a little little brighter than than 2020 well uh today we find ourselves uh kind of uh kind of uh it, it, i can't say coincidentally because that's uh, i don't believe necessarily in coincidences but the verses for today uh as we come back together for our 10 10 uh devotions um uh, find us in an interesting place um uh, kind of that theme that we've been looking at over the last nine to ten months um that comes from john 10 10 is one of our verses for today and and you know i think it's important for us as we as we look at these verses today uh to remember god's faithfulness that god was good to us in 2020 he remained faithful even through some very difficult things and god promises uh to be with us in the days ahead and so our first reading for today uh comes from psalm 23 verse 6 Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord uh, my whole life long. Uh, goodness and, and mercy. And I think as you, you kind of think back over the, the last year, 2020, um, as you look forward to 2021, um, one of the things that goes with us is God's goodness and, and mercy. Shall never shall follow me all the days of, of my life. And we're just grateful for that uh, today, um, that, that our God is, is with us um, and our God is faithful. Uh, he pours out his, his blessings on us. And then even when, um, you know, I think... Um, this life comes to an end, we have that assurance. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All, all my whole life long. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And uh, we have that, that promise uh, for us. And um, that promise is what, what guides us uh, in our day-to-day uh, -day life. Our second verse for today comes from John 10, 10. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Uh, this has been our theme uh, as our 10, 10 devotions uh, began back in March. Uh, that was what we wanted to focus on, uh, that Jesus has come, that we would have life and that we would have it to the full, that we would have it abundantly, and that no matter what we may face uh, ahead, uh, our, our Lord is with us and he, he has come uh, to bring us life and and that's what really what we we're focusing on today is this kind of paradigm shift we're starting to see it in the in the book of acts uh, when we left the book of acts uh, two weeks ago um we were looking at the story of of a man named uh 
Stephen. Uh, Stephen was speaking to the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin. Uh, we know that he was persecuted uh, for speaking the truth about Jesus, this paradigm shift, how Jesus came to change everything, that I've came that you may have life and have it abundantly. And, and, and um, S Stephen shares this with the religious leaders, but they want to stay in that old paradigm that makes it all about them and how they, uh, they can find uh, this life uh, apart from, uh, from Jesus. Uh, and and as, as you remember, he is persecuted uh, for proclaiming this message, this, this paradigm shift. The church is scattered, and it looks, looks like an awful thing in uh, Acts 8. The church is scattered. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered out through Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Wow, uh, how, how horrible that must have been. Uh, how difficult a time that must have been. And yet, as we know, as we look back, God used it. Uh, God used it for good. As the church went out, the, the, the paradigm is, is shifting. This paradigm uh, that, that Jesus in, in, installed that Jesus set forth is beginning now to spread throughout the world and we see that happening uh, as, it, as it works in the life of Paul as Paul is converted um, as the disciples Philip d does his work converts uh, the Ethiopian um, and is, he is baptized uh, and we see the gospel this good news going out to all the world um, and then we find ourselves in chapter 10 uh, today. And it's the story of, of Cornelius, uh, who is a, a centurion uh, from the Italian regiment. And he is, uh, receives a message from the Lord. And uh, at this point in time, uh, he, he sends messengers to, that Peter would come and share the gospel with him. Now, this is going to be a paradigm for, for Peter, a paradigm shift for Peter. Uh, and um, it's a process for Peter, just like it's a process uh, for, for us. So let me read for you today from, from Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 23a. We don't get the whole story here, uh, but we know that Cornelius has called Peter, sent messengers to get Peter and, so that he can come and share this message with this, this centurion, this Roman centurion. And here's what he says. This is what happened now to Paul after Cornelius sent the messengers to find him. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you are looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. We know that the church is going out. 
uh, going out to all the world. We find ourselves in the season of epiphany, and that's what it means, the shi light shining out, going out. fits in real well with the book of Acts as we see the church going out into the world. But f in order for that ha to happen, there needs to be some paradigm shifts. Paradigm shifts that, that Jesus began to institute during his ministry and now handing over to his disciples. Now, and this may not make a whole lot of sense to us, but uh, for the for the old uh, paradigm, um, the Jews were clean, and anybody outside Judaism was seen as unclean, and that was portrayed in the way that they lived their their lives. And so, one of the things of this old paradigm, this old Jewish paradigm, was uh, what you could eat, what was clean and unclean. Um, and, and Peter here is, in this dream, told to eat that or take in that which is unclean. And he's like, I can't, I can't do that. That goes against everything I, I know. But you see, the paradigm is starting to shift. And it, it already began to shift in Jesus. And now it is starting to shift in the church. That there is nothing that is unclean. Now, the old way of thinking, you might remember when Jesus came upon someone who was sick or ill, or had leprosy. Uh, the, the, the tendency was to stay away. And the leper would call out and say, unclean, unclean, kind of like it is now. When we are walking on the street, we have to walk around people uh, because of the COVID-19. Um, and so in, this, in, the, in that way of thinking, anyone who had a disease was unclean, and the clean person would become unclean by being in contact with that unclean person. But Jesus already begins this paradigm shift. Jesus, who was clean, touches the unclean, and then the unclean becomes clean. And now we're starting to see that. Peter's like, whoa, Lord, I, I, can't, I can't do that. He's thinking this old way. I'm clean. If I touch the unclean, I will become unclean. But the Lord is saying, okay, Peter, there's a paradigm shift, a different way of thinking. Jesus has made it possible for all people to be a part of the family of God, clean or unclean. Because in God's eyes, the reality is we are all unclean and need a Savior. But Jesus, who is clean, touches the unclean, and then the unclean becomes clean. And so we're going to see that play out. And it's going to cause some friction in the church. Uh, it's going to cause people to step back a little bit. But this is what Jesus has come to do. I have come, he says. You can't make yourself uh, alive. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And so we begin to see how this paradigm shift begins to take place. But it, it's not easy. And I think uh, it's not easy for us to say, hey, I need a Savior. I am unclean, but I have one who has come. And he offers me goodness and mercy. He offers me life now and for eternity. And I think this paradigm shift has to start changing the way we think as well and the way that we see others. Uh, for a long time, the church has said, oh, if you're unclean, you have to stay away because then we will become unclean. But Jesus changes that. Jesus says, you are clean because of me and because of your me living in you, because you are clean, you, you can bring cleanness to those who are unclean. Don't stay away. Reach out to those and bring them this abundant life that I have come to give. So we start to shift the way that we see others. Just the way, in the way that, uh, that Jesus sees us. While you were still sinners, Christ died for you. Christ died for all. And so uh, I think that's a powerful way to begin our, our new year. Rem reminded again that we have a God who brings goodness and mercy to us, who made that which was unclean clean, so that we can begin to see in a whole new way and live in a whole new way uh, as we begin this whole new year, 2021. A couple of prayers uh, today for Tom and Michelle, friends of Joe Grish, uh, dealing with health issues, cancer, and uh, autoimmune disease. Uh, we pray for them, lift them up. Uh, pray for uh, Bob Cahill Sr. Uh, I don't know where he's at, kind of out of the loop on some of these things. Pray for uh, others uh, who are dealing with sickness and illness. Uh, pray, pray for speedy uh, 
recovery for all, pray for protection around uh, those um, near and around COVID-19, pray for a quick distribution of the vaccine, uh, pray for peace and uh, wholeness uh, in a nation uh, that is falling apart, breaking apart, it seems like. Um, so we just ask those things uh, in, in Jesus' name uh, today. Let me pray the prayer uh, for us today. Good Shepherd, we pray that you gather us in the shadow of your rod and robes. Walk with us along the path as we trod and keep us safe from the dangers that constantly surround us. Give us new life this day. Father, we come to you uh, grateful for the new life that is ours in Christ that we who are unclean have been made clean, and that we can begin to see in a whole new way, uh, that you bring, you give to us the opportunity to bring wholeness and healing and cleansing and love and forgiveness to, to a broken world. Uh, Lord, we live in, the, in the, the peace and the certainty, uh, the life that gives to us, because you are a God who brings goodness and mercy to us, and we seek to bring it to the world. Help us to do that. Give us new eyes to see, to see ourselves in a new way and to see the people around us in a new way. Uh, that you have come, that we would have life and have it abundantly. We're thankful for that again today, Lord. Uh, we pray for the friends of Joe, uh, for Tom and Michelle, that you would be with them and watch over them. For Bob Cahill Sr., see battles health issues. So we pray for expect mothers, that your hand of favor would be upon them. Uh, we pray for your hand of protection around those who are sick and ill those who are battling COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones to this disease. We pray for a swift and quick ending uh, to this, Lord, um, as we, as we uh, just ask, uh, Lord, for that to happen soon. Pray for leadership and direction in our nation. Help us, Lord, to, to find peace in you uh, amid a, a system that, that wants to rile people up and get people afraid. Lord, help us to find our real and lasting and true peace in you. Lord, uh, ask your blessing on this day. So good to be together again. And uh, just as we move forward in this year, 2021, Lord, we ask your blessing upon it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good to be with you guys. Uh, you have a great day. We'll be sending out links, I'm sure, for uh, worship this weekend. You're welcome to join us. Love to have you be a part of that um, as we uh, continue to, to move forward. Uh, have a great day, you guys, and good to be with you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.